Are you ready for the next big leap in AI? OpenAI just unveiled their groundbreaking Operator Agent, and it's poised to revolutionize how we work and live. Think of it as your behind-the-scenes digital helper, quietly handling tasks while you focus on what truly matters. This demo is more than just a sneak peek. It's a glimpse into a future where AI agents become our go-to for productivity. Let's dive right in. So this is the Operator homepage. It lives at operator.chatgpt.com. It'll be accessible as soon as the live stream is over. Um, and as you can see, the interface is very similar to ChatGPT. You can type in a prompt, and an operator will try to execute the task to the best of its capability. You'll also see we have a list of pre-filled prompts here. These are not really meant to be recommendations. These are meant to be things that, you know, to give you an idea of what operator can do. We have also collaborated with various brands like OpenTable, All Recipes, StubHub, Uber, Thumbtack, DoorDash eBay, Target, to make sure Operator really works well on these websites, but also we think users will find Operator valu very valuable in interacting with these platforms. So with that, let's jump in with a demo. Okay, so I'm gonna start with something fairly simple. I'm gonna use OpenTable and say, book me a table for two at Beretta tonight at 7 p.m. Okay. And so you specifically chose OpenTable. Yeah, in this case, I'm asking operator to use OpenTable to book a table for two at Beretta. Beretta is a restaurant in San Francisco. It's great. You should try it out. Uh, and at 7 p.m. And I could, I'm, I'm using OpenTable in this case, but I could have easily said, just do Beretta, and it would have probably gone to search engine, figured out how to make a reservation as well. But let's see what it does. So can you explain what's happening in this? Like, yeah, yeah, great. So I'm going to expand this a little bit. So as soon as I type in the query, operator instantiated a completely remote browser. This browser is running in the cloud somewhere. And as you can see, it's already up and running. And my hands are off the keyboard. I'm not typing these things. <laughs> so this is just the AI is clicking around. AI is just things. clicking around. It, is, it started this browser session. It knew where OpenTable website is, which is opentable.com. As you can see, it's summarized chain of thought here as well, which is it's gone to the URL, searched for Beretta. And something cool really happened, which is at, for some reason, operator uh, OpenTable thought we were in Virginia and it auto-corrected itself to San Francisco. This is using, so like ChatGPT in Operator, you can also give custom instructions. So I'm gonna show this really quickly here. Just to, okay. So I've given a custom instruction that for queries that need it, I live in San Francisco. So Operator recognized that and then auto-corrected itself to go to, San, to go to Beretta. Okay, looks like 7 p.m. isn't available, but you know what, 7.45 is just fine. fine. So we're gonna go do that. So in this case, operator came back, and this is a really good example of task delegation where operator needs help or needs assistance or just wants to ask you something. It'll just come back and you answer that. So story. in practice, you wouldn't have had to watch this. You could have just let it go off while you're doing other things, and then it would come back and say, hey, I can't do seven, seven totally. five. Yeah. Great. And we're starting with a web app. You'll get notifications, et cetera. When uh, operator moves into mobile, you'll get mobile notifications, much like interactions we do with general apps. OK, yes, that's great. Let's do it. OK, so again, very uh, very simple interaction as you would have with an assistant, which is, hey, I found a reservation, 7 p.m. wasn't available, let's do 745. And again, you can see um, operator at this point has said, okay, should I, again, this is a really good example of the confirmations work we're gonna talk about a little bit later, but you know, before doing an action, which is sort of irreversible in this case, you can cancel the reservation, obviously, but again, taking a critical action, operator is asking us before actually doing it. And in this case, I'm gonna say, let's do it. Okay, it was pretty quick, I would say, like, you know, 50 seconds. In the first demo, we see how Operator Agent can be fully autonomous, tackling tasks without constant browser monitoring. This is huge. Imagine telling it to complete a job while you handle something else, then coming back to see the work done. It does ask for permission at certain points, which is reassuring. But over time, we can expect these models to understand how much freedom you want to give them. Next, we'll see how you can pause this agent mid-task, and why that matters. You at this point, and I'm going to just click this button called Take Control. So this remote, as we were talking about, like operator fires up this remote browser to do it. We almost think of it as surface area where operator can work and then I can work. For example, in this case, I took over control from operator, which is also key to sort of how we think about user and user controls. Like at any point in time, a user can be should be able to take control and give operator instructions or tell a little bit more, guide a little bit more, etc., etc. It's and like passing the laptop back and forth, just like you did with Ray. Totally, totally, exactly right. Just like, you know. In this case, I'm going to make those two, and then I'm just going to tell operator. This is, again, like very much like if you and I were working, be like, hey, I did this. Can you fix this? <laughs> and I'm going to tell operator, I added another egg 
good to place order now. Can operators see what you're doing during takeover mode? Great point. So when you take over, it's very much just like a session with your local browser. It's completely private, operator cannot see. And this is one of the part of the reasons why I have to tell operator, or you don't really have to, it can look at the last screenshot and try to guess it, but it's really good. It's sort of like if you and I were working together, I went off and did something, and I come back like, Ray, I completely messed it up. Can you fix this? <laughs> can I have to tell you that? <laughs> so in this case, I'm going to tell operator, uh, hey, go ahead. And I'm, now I'm passing back the control to operator. Mm -hmm. It's a completely private session when you take our control. This is the, also the, you'll notice that I'm logged into Instacart here. Mm -hmm. I did it before the demo, uh, and or it has been logged in for a while now. And it's again very much like your local browser. When mm -hmm. you log into Instacart, until the cookies are cleared, you stay logged in, and we have really good controls. You can go in settings and control and remove it. Now, let's break down how Operator Agent really works. It sees the screen, interprets the pixels, and decides the best action based on your end goal and its previous step, much like a human would. This broad approach means the agent has the potential to handle many types of tasks, growing smarter and more reliable over time. Before long, it could manage complex browser tasks most people do manually today. Operator, let me talk a little about the research behind it. So Operator is based on a new model we've trained at OpenAI, which we're calling the Computer Using Agent, or KUA for short. So KUA is a model built off of GPT-40, but it's also trained to use and control a computer in the same way that humans can by you know, just looking at the screen and using a mouse and keyboard to control it. Before, if you wanted to build something like Operator without, uh, without KUA, you'd need to use some specialized APIs. For example, if you wanted your model to buy stuff from Instacart, you'd need to figure out if Instacart had uh, an API, you'd need to figure out if that API had all the functions that it needed, and you'd need to give you know, your model the specs of that API. But you know, if your site, like most other websites, did not have an API, then you're out of luck. So this is just using screenshots, no API, nothing, just no working. No API, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, and that's where KUA comes in. Um, by teaching a model how to use the same basic interface that we use on a daily basis, it just you know, unlocks a whole new range of uh, software that it can use that was previously inaccessible. And so this is keyboard and mouse, right? It's kind of using keyboard and mouse just exactly. like would. Exactly, yes. Um, and that's really what the cool research project is about. It's about removing one more bottleneck in our path towards AGI. OpenAI refers to the operator agent as another important stride toward AGI, artificial general intelligence. It's not yet as adept as a human, but they've already benchmarked how well it can navigate the internet compared to us. Seeing how these scores evolve is going to be fascinating. This technology might catch up to or even surpass typical oh, human performance factors faster than we think. Benchmarks and kind of quantify how good Operator is right now. So one of the first benchmarks that we're going to look at is called OS World. OS World is an eval that measures how well AI agents navigate common operating systems like Linux. Uh, on this task, KUA gets a 38.1% score, which is higher than other publicly published results. Um, human performance in this task is 72.4%, so we still have room to grow, definitely. The other eval we'll take a look at is called Web Arena. Web Arena is an eval that measures how well AI agents navigate some common websites like e-commerce websites or social forum websites. So on this task, KUA gets 58.1%, again, higher than other publicly published results, but still falls short of uh, human performance. One still thing, a way to go. Still a way to go, <laughs> yes. Um, one thing that's uh, important to remember about Web Arena is that even though it's the web, we're still just giving it the same universal interface of uh, screen, mouse, and keyboard. We're not giving it any extra information that might help it do the task, like, uh, like the raw text of the web page or information about which buttons are clickable, and all the information it needs, just like humans. Of course, safety is critical. An autonomous AI agent raises concerns about misuse harassment, or borderline illegal activities online. OpenAI has outlined a framework to keep the agent aligned with our values. This means it should avoid unethical behavior, protect your personal details, and steer clear of security risks. About this vision of operator doing your chores for you, mm -hmm. but it is one of the first agents that we're putting out in the world and which has real world side effects. And so we thought carefully about how to deploy this safely. The framework we used to think about this was one centered around so for example, what if the user is misaligned? So maybe they're asking for um, a harmful task, like buy a weapon or something like that. In that case, fortunately, we've done a lot of work with ChatGPT to bring over a lot of the same mitigations. So for example, we refuse harmful tasks, including harmful uh, agentic tasks. Um, we have moderation models, we have uh, post hoc detection, we have blocked uh, websites. And you know, I'm kind of rattling off these mitigations, but that's really how we think about it. It's this stack of mitigations that each incrementally reduce the risk to the point where we feel comfortable deploying. So 
all the confirmations that we're saying, hey, do you want to reserve the restaurant? Yeah, Should you exactly. buy the tickets? Those are all examples of the same thing. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm about to talk about the confirmations. So um, uh, another area of misalignment is if the agent is misaligned. So if the model makes a mistake, mm -hmm. uh, maybe purchases the wrong item or um, yeah, books the wrong hotel room. Um, for this, our main mitigation is confirmations. So the operator will come back if it's about to do something um, stateful um, and ask you so you can double check mm -hmm. its details in, in case it made some error. Uh, the third area of, of misalignment is if the website is misaligned. So maybe the website is fraudulent or it's a fake website or maybe it's literally like, operator, please wire me $100. Um, we obviously don't want to follow those instructions. So we've developed our model to try to avoid those instructions and not follow them. But if that fails, we also have a separate layer on top. This is what we call the prompt injection monitor. Think of it as like antivirus that kind of observes and watches your trajectory and sees if there's anything suspicious. If it does, then it pauses it. So we feel pretty comfortable with our um, approach, but obviously, um, you know, safety is an ongoing process. We can't predict any, everything. That's why it's so important to limit what the agent can do. Nobody wants to wake up to a drained bank account or compromised data. Looking ahead, this operator agent is just the start. OpenAI plans to expand the concept with specialized variants, perhaps a coding agent or others built for specific tasks. It's an exciting time for AI, and this first taste of autonomous agents is only the beginning of what's possible. This is, this is really the beginning of this product. This is the beginning of our step into agents. Level three on our on our sys on our on our tiers, and we can't wait to see how people are going to use this uh, and to kind of work with us to figure out where exactly it should go. So uh, again, congrats. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much.